One thing that's happened uh, repeatedly, and not surprising me in our work in inner and outer, inner and outer transition, has been that the, the two people who are drawn to the practical side and, and people who are drawn to the inner dimension do tend to polarise, do tend to be different kinds of people and be quite wary of the other side for, um, for the historical reasons of the potency, I think, of this divide in our culture. And I was thinking one day, how, how can I speak to the people who are very drawn to the practical side and have this very uh, inspired and uplifting and visionary sense of the change we can make in the world through the transition movement, how can I really say, no, the, the inner work isn't, if I caricature it, isn't just a kind of fluffy, marginal add-on. It's really important and it's also really exciting. And I, wonder, I found myself imagining saying to uh, somebody in particular, do you know there's a worldwide movement of consciousness Transition is really going to connect, want to connect him with that, isn't it? You know, this isn't a small add on, this is an essential part of what we're doing. And, um, and then I asked myself, well, is there a worldwide movement of consciousness? Where have I got that from, actually? You know, is that a, a little bit of a, a topness thing to think that without really having thought it through? And the more I looked, the more I was very moved by what I found, actually. Um, and I, three strands of such a movement seem to me to be clearly detectable. And one of them in my own life is indeed the, the mushrooming development in the West, in this particular part of the world which has created this very destructive culture of, of, a healing, of healing systems for humanity. And that would be Western psychology. And it's quite extraordinary when you take a look at how many schools of therapy and counselling have grown up in the last 100 or 200 years. An extraordinary development and flowering of from CBT to Freudian, psychoanalytic, gestalt, person-centred, many, many flavours, psychosynthesis, and more and more people being drawn, to, you know, always meeting somebody else saying, I'm going to do a counselling course now. It's like there's a movement of energy, you could say, in the collective consciousness to learning in this form developed within the West, how we heal. So I was aware of that strand, and I was, having trained as an integrative therapist, I'd been challenged to think about integrating it. That, that was important to me. But I was also aware of something that had come to me later in my life, that... Uh, as prophesied, prophesied even back from the 9th century Tibet, that Eastern teachings were prophesied to come to the West, to come out into the world at the time when, as Joanna Macy says, life might be hanging by a thread, that life was in a balance, at a very difficult time on life on Earth, the wisdom of the East would come into the collective consciousness, into those countries where the difficulty was arising. Um, and she talks about the Shambhala warrior prophecy um, in which warriors working with insight and compassion would come in at a time when life on earth hands, hangs in the balance. She talks about the weapons of destruction being mano maya, made by the human mind, and being made by the human mind need to be unmade by the human mind. So that's a lovely example of Eastern teachings coming in through Diana, through Joanna. But clearly, since the 1960s at least, yoga, tai chi, meditation practice, qigong, zen, you know, there are many, many forms in which this has come in and, and I think is influencing and bringing tremendous resource and presence and possibility to the work we need in, in inner transition um, and across the world to transforming how, how we live practices of presence and mindfulness and compassion are now coming into education and into the National Health Service and um, radicalising even sometimes how scientists are thinking about their work. So for me that's a second and extraordinary strand. For me, thinking about these questions, um, I have been repeatedly impacted by the clarity of the insight and the simple accessible language and the potency of the understanding of the mess we're in that comes from people outside of the mess we're in, if you like, outside of the pathology, and that's indigenous writers and speakers. Um, however, I've always, as well as feeling very sad throughout my life, knowing about the genocide of indigenous peoples in, throughout America, Australia, 
and many other parts of the world, Canada, South America. This was to me a tremendous tragedy. I felt like this wasn't really a place I, I should go um, because indigenous peoples don't want the last thing stolen also, which is our wisdom and our understanding. And I've become really aware that in the last decade or two, that for many people that's changed that for many, many South American and other countries there are indigenous people speaking out, saying we have wisdom to offer the world, you need to learn from us. From the Kogi in Colombia to the Achua in Ecuador who created the Pachamama Alliance to the um, Council of 13 Indigenous Grandmothers coming from many different parts of the world, they're now meeting twice a year, they've been meeting since 2004, and each is saying, we believe that our ancestral wisdom, our understandings and our insights will light the way through an uncertain future. Um, so that would be the third strand. Those are the three strands, Western psychotherapy, Eastern spiritual tradition, and indigenous teachings, which seem to me constitute arguably a worldwide movement of consciousness with which transition might well want to connect. And look, looking retrospectively, it seemed very clear that we do, in fact, in inner transition, draw from all three, transi three traditions.